This episode is brought to you by the letter T. T is for tea cozies, which Grace makes. T is for teapots, which you can see behind Grace's stall. There are dozens of teapots. T is for tea, poured by servants. T is for Travis, who knocks over a teapot in Edgar and Grace's bedroom. Did Edgar get poisoned via tea? T is also for typewriter, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's solve the after party, season two, episode two, Grace. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Edgar the groom and Roxana the lizard. Spoilers for all of season one and the first two episodes of the second season of the after party. If you haven't seen all 10 episodes, pause this video. Move your body to gyrations to get in front of a television and watch all of them. Then come back after you've watched them. Use the timestamps below to jump to the topic or suspect you want to hear and skip past the stuff you don't want to hear. We've got another call for help just to remind you to share your clues, theories, and comments down below. Pinky swear. Hashtag same page. We'll be reading your feedback at the end of each episode. You can reach out to us also on social media, at double PHQ, that's the word double, the single letter P, HQ for headquarters, at double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash double PHQ, and now we're on threads too. Let's begin by looking at this week's bonus clue. Last week, it was not the snore. This week, not the skater. How do you come up with this bonus clue? Well, look at Edgar's itinerary. Can you read this? If you can read this cursive, it's several airports. We've got Marin County Airport, or NOS Field. And if you look at the International Air Transport Association code for it, it's N-O-T, not. The next airport, I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but its airport code is T-H-E, not the. The third airport is the Fairchild Air Force Base. Its airport code is S-K-A. Then the final one's in Portugal, I'm not going to try to pronounce it either, but its airport code is T-R-E. Combine those airport codes together, not the skater. I've mentioned it last week, but there's also the wedding website, edgarandgracewedding.com. On the website, you'll find a field where it asks you to enter a flower. If you enter a correct flower, you'll be brought to a place where you can see even more puzzles. Before we run down the suspects, let's look at what episode 2 taught us about the victims Edgar and Roxana. Notice this odd relationship between Edgar and Roxana. When Roxana is off Edgar's shoulder, he can dance. But when Roxana is there, he can't. Edgar presents Grace with a prenup, which she doesn't sign. Edgar is into biohacking. He wants to live until he's 140 years old. And that includes having a CBC, calibrated bedtime consistency. Somebody into biohacking might be taking and doing things to their body which aren't natural. I still think there's a chance that Edgar and Roxana's death is caused by something Edgar did. Now, Edgar does appear to love Grace. In the vow box, he tells her that she's the only puzzle he wants to solve. Again, during that first dance, note Roxana is not on his shoulder. But he gets a message on his watch. He mentions Roxana and then he leaves. Who sent that message? At 9.50 p.m., Edgar returns from his mysterious call, a specific timestamp, so we need to figure out what happened before and after. When Zoe and Travis look through Edgar's pockets, they find his phone, breath mints, lip balm, and a cufflink, even though he's already wearing cufflinks. This clue will come up in a bit when we get to the typewriter. They also found a prescription for Adderall in Edgar's pocket even though earlier in this episode, Edgar claimed he couldn't do pharmaceuticals. Is that perhaps why his sister grows those plants, because he doesn't trust pharmaceuticals? On his way to the after party with his wife, Grace, Edgar gets another message and disappears. Edgar's last words, I love you, Roxana. Now let's look at the suspects. Anik. Okay, I really don't have any good clues for Anik this week. Let's keep going. Fang, the father of the bride. It's very subtle, but Fang does suggest he may have some money issues. He's certainly not as rich as the minnows. 
Grace demands that her father's dessert be served at the reception, and Edgar did mumble, bow, being before he passed out. Grace, the bride. Grace refused to sign the prenup, but says she was planning to sign it on Monday, which is very convenient timing. The old typewriter. Now, this old typewriter we're going to talk about a lot. When the body is once again being searched by Zoe and Travis, they discover a lone cufflink. Now, note that in episode one, we saw cufflinks were in his safe, and Edgar pulled them out and put them on his desk. These cufflinks, what are they? Why are they special? Well, now we're going to have to go to the official after-party poster for season two. If we zoom in on Anik's cufflink, you'll note it's the letter G in a circle. And this cufflink appears to have been made from the old typewriter keys. Certainly a cute thing for Edgar to do, make a cufflink out of the typewriter that he first bought from Grace, and that's how they met. Note that in this quick flash of the typewriter keys, there is no letter G there. Instead, it's got several letters repeating, but it doesn't have a B, a G, a J, a K, an M, a P, Q, T, X, Z. Those letters are missing. Grace says that she broke up with someone six months ago, right before she met Edgar, and that person stole her underwear, and that person wasn't Travis. Will we meet that person? Now, Grace's relationship with Edgar and Hannah seems to be hinted at in this episode. Edgar and Grace's first date was actually at Hannah's birthday party. When Edgar left her, Grace says the sentence, I would spend time with Hannah. It was all so wonderful. Grace is the one who suggests Hannah do the wedding, flowers, for the rehearsal dinner and the reception. When Grace talks about the wedding, she says it will be wonderful because the people that I love will be there. Not the man that I love, but the people that I love will be there. Grace's Adderall case has two sides. It seems like it's the same pills on both sides of the case, but there are two sides to it. Now, Grace did close the antique stall. She's given a hairpin from her mother-in-law to be, and she's supposed to wear it. Maybe I'm not good at noticing these things. Guys, does she wear this hairpin throughout the wedding? Final thing to note, Grace put Roxana in the cage at the end of the night. Grace may have been the last person to see Roxana alive. Hannah, the groom's sister, who everyone now knows is adopted. Hannah received the typewriter that Edgar brought from Grace that the cufflinks were seemingly made from. Hannah says Grace's name before they had been introduced. So once again, Grace is coming to Edgar's sister's birthday party, but she hadn't met the sister yet. And the sister runs up to her saying, Grace, they hadn't been introduced yet. Now, maybe Edgar had said, hey, I'm bringing a new girl to your birthday party and her name is Grace. But Hannah remembered it. Hannah is intimate with Grace at multiple places, including comforting her at the bachelorette party. Isabel, the mother of the groom. Isabel keeps saying Grace's name wrong as Gail. In fact, Isabel put the wrong name, Gail, on the napkins at the rehearsal dinner. Isabel is the one who presents the hairpin to Grace, but again, I don't see Grace wearing it. Where is it, guys? Now, according to Grace, Isabel was suddenly very nice to her at the after party. Was Isabel drugged as well? Sebastian Drapewood, the best, better man. Sebastian, he is just the worst. He stops Grace and Edgar from having their first kiss on their first date. He also puts the idea of a first dance in Grace's head, and she ends up demanding Edgar do it, even though he knows that Edgar wouldn't want to dance. And of course, that is what causes Edgar to give away Roxana so he can dance. Travis. Now, Travis, I'm going to put in air quotes, accidentally nearly destroys the teapot in the bedroom. It really looks like he tried to do it on purpose, but why? He also spends a lot of time with Edgar's phone and locks it, but why? A bigger thing about Travis is we see him wearing a trench coat sometimes and a hat sometimes, and other times he doesn't have the hat or the trench coat. Is he hiding something in the trench coat? Travis claims that Grace broke his heart. At the after party, Travis went up to Edgar and said, I know what you did. I won't let you do this to Grace. You're going to die. Travis was the first one at the door when Grace screamed. And Travis has a big folder on Edgar. Uncle Ulysses. He steps in to dance with Grace when Edgar leaves. Is this a father-daughter dance? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, there is the animosity between Ulysses and Fang. Are they trying to hint that Ulysses is Grace's father? 
Note that when he came in at episode one, he was very threatening to Edgar, saying, if you break Grace's heart, if you do anything, I'll kill you. Do uncles really say that? Doesn't the father say that? Also, look at the wedding photo. Ulysses stands right behind Grace rather than in a line like everybody else. Ulysses is also the one who celebrates, hey, let's go to the after party. Vivian, the mother of the bride. Vivian says she wants to reuse the flowers from the rehearsal dinner at the wedding and the wedding arrangements. Is this another sign that she and Fang are on financially shaky ground? Zoe, the bride's sister. The main thing about Zoe is she is very quick to point out Edgar's faults. Mm. What do you think of the suspects? Did we leave off any clues? Go down in the comments, let us know. Reach out to us on social media at Double PHQ. Now let's go to the other wedding guest for some feedback. The first wedding guest is Quincy, who wrote, I think ultimately it's going to be between Hannah or Sebastian. If it was one of Grace's family members or Edgar's own mother, the story would take an incredibly dark turn. Luca wrote, My theory is that Edgar's mother, Isabel, is the murderer, and she's probably the one who seems not to have a reason or an opportunity to kill at this moment. Christina wrote, I just can't get over Edgar repeating, I like jokes, almost as if his death was a joke gone horribly wrong. Isabel's speech is all variations of binary code. And Alex wrote, Hannah, Sebastian, and Travis are my main suspects. Hannah clearly has an attachment of sorts to Grace. Sebastian was very close to Edgar's body when everybody came in and hovered over him. And Sebastian is the one who persuaded Isabel not to call the sheriff. Did he do that to give him more time to steal the cryptocurrency keys? Finally, Alex says, Travis is a character who it could be less dim-witted than he seems. Who do you think? What do you think? Go down in the comments. Let us know. We're going to be breaking down all eight episodes of season two, and we need your assistance. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. We'll talk to you next week, wedding guests.